My name is John and I live in a small town in Ohio. My life has always been quite simple and measured. Working at a local construction company, hanging out with friends on weekends, occasional trips to the big city. Everything changed when I met Sarah. It happened at my best friend Mike's birthday party. Sarah came with a friend who knew Mike. From the first glance, I knew it was love. Her beautiful green eyes, charming smile, and infectious laughter captured my heart. We started dating, and everything was just perfect. Sarah worked as a nurse at the local hospital, and we often spent evenings together, walking in the park or watching movies at home. After six months, I proposed to her, and she said yes. Wedding preparations were in full swing. We were choosing a venue for the ceremony, sending out invitations, looking for a suitable house for our future family. Sarah wanted a grand wedding, and I was ready to do anything to make her dream come true. A month before the wedding, Sarah's sister Emily arrived with her husband David. They planned to stay with us until the ceremony and help with the final preparations. Emily was seven months pregnant, and we all took care of her. However, soon I began to notice oddities in Sarah's behavior. She started staying late at work, sometimes not coming home for the night. When I asked where she had been, Sarah always found excuses, either an urgent call to the hospital or a girl's night out with colleagues. At first, I believed her, attributing everything to pre-wedding chores and stress. But doubts gnawed at me from the inside. I felt that something was wrong, but was afraid to admit it to myself. My suspicions intensified when I accidentally overheard Sarah's phone conversation. She was talking to someone, laughing and calling the person Honey. When I entered the room, she quickly ended the call and started hastily getting ready for work. I couldn't stand this uncertainty any longer. Without Sarah's knowledge, I began to follow her. I took time off work, sat in the car near the hospital, watching the entrance. And my worst fears were confirmed. One evening, I saw Sarah leaving the hospital arm in arm with David, her sister's husband. They hugged tenderly, kissed, and got into his car. Following them, I learned that they had rented a room in a motel on the outskirts of town. It's hard to put into words the pain, anger, and disappointment I felt. The woman I loved more than life, the future mother of my children, betrayed me with her own sister's husband. And Emily, poor Emily, in her last months of pregnancy, didn't even suspect it. I didn't know what to do. My world collapsed overnight. I wanted to burst into that damn motel and beat the crap out of David, tell Sarah everything I thought of her. But common sense suggested that I needed to act carefully. Over the next few days, I continued to spy on them. Time after time, I witnessed their meetings, kisses, and embraces. Each time it cut deeper, but I endured. I needed irrefutable proof. A week before the wedding, I installed a hidden camera in our bedroom, and it captured what finally broke my heart. Sarah brought David into our home, into our bed. They had sex, whispered words of love to each other, made plans for a future together. At that moment, I decided that everyone would have to pay in full. I couldn't let Sarah ruin not only my life, but also her sister's. She had to answer for her betrayal, and I began to prepare a revenge plan. The wedding day started like a fairy tale. Sunny morning. A church decorated with flowers, happy faces of guests. I greeted them with a smile, but inside me, a storm of emotions was raging. Today, everything had to end. Sarah looked stunning in her wedding dress. Looking at her, no one could have suspected what rot was hiding behind the beautiful facade. She walked to the altar arm in arm with her father, beaming with joy. Only I knew that this joy was feigned. During the ceremony, I could barely restrain myself from breaking down. Uttering the words of the vow... I felt the bitterness of each word, to be faithful in sickness and health, in sorrow and joy, until death do us part. Well, the death of our relationship was already near. After the official part, the guests went to the restaurant where the festive table was set. Everyone was having fun, making toasts, congratulating us. And I was secretly glancing at my watch, knowing that the moment of truth would soon come. Sarah and David tried their best to pretend that they barely knew each other. But I noticed their winks, accidental touches when they thought no one was looking. Emily sat next to her husband, her hand on her belly, smiling. She couldn't imagine what surprise I had prepared. When the guests had drunk enough and relaxed, I stood up and asked for attention. Said I wanted to make a little surprise for my newlywed wife. Sarah gave me a surprised look. We hadn't planned any surprises. I asked the technician to play the pre-prepared video on the big screen. The lights in the hall went out and the image of our bedroom appeared on the screen. Sarah and David, naked, passionately kissing on our bed. A deathly silence hung in the hall. 
Only Emily's soft sobs broke it. Meanwhile, an obscene spectacle unfolded on the screen. My wife's affair with her sister's husband in all details. Five minutes. That's how long the video I edited from hidden camera footage lasted. Five minutes of shame, disgrace, and shock for everyone present. Five minutes that ruined several lives. When the video ended and the lights came on, the hall was filled with a ringing silence. The guests looked at Sarah and me, at Emily and David not knowing how to react. And I just turned to my wife and said, You thought I didn't know? Fear, shame, and anger splashed in her eyes. But instead of answering... She just threw the bouquet at me and ran out of the hall. David rushed after her, and Emily was crying, covering her face with her hands. But that's not all. I had another surprise in store. I addressed the guests. And now, gentlemen, I'll ask you to turn over your plates. Those who have a red sticker on the bottom, please stand up. Eight men, including my brother-in-law, rose from the table. The guests looked perplexedly from me to them. And I continued, These gentlemen are just a small part of my dear wife's lovers during our engagement. I confess, even I'm impressed by the scope. Well, the marriage is annulled. Thank you all for your attention. And I walked out of the hall to the deadly silence of the guests. Already outside, Mike caught up with me. He looked at me with sympathy and slight condemnation. Dude, that was harsh. Are you sure it was worth it? I grinned bitterly. She ruined my life, broke my heart. You think I should have just walked away quietly? No, let the whole town know who she really is. Mike shook his head but didn't argue. We said goodbye and I went home or rather, to the house that was ours with Sarah until yesterday. Now it was empty, like my soul. The phone vibrated in my pocket. A text from Sarah, full of swearing and accusations. They kept coming all night, but I didn't even read them. I didn't care. This woman no longer had power over me. The next few days passed as if in a fog. I took a vacation from work, not wanting to answer my colleagues' questions. Rumors in our town spread quickly. And the very next day after the wedding, everyone was only gossiping about the scandalous affair. My parents came to me, tried to comfort me, but I didn't need comfort. I felt a strange emptiness, and at the same time relief, as if an abscess in my soul had finally burst, and now I could move on with my life. Emily came too. The poor thing looked just awful. Pale, with eyes red from tears. She incoherently apologized for her sister, saying that she couldn't even imagine her affair with David. And I comforted her as best I could, telling her that it wasn't her fault. I didn't see Sarah herself anymore. She didn't even come to pick up her things. She sent her friends. Apparently, she didn't want to look me in the eye. Well, that's her right. I wasn't too happy about such a meeting either. Days passed. The pain gradually subsided. I started making plans for the future, without lies, betrayal, and cheaters. I decided to sell the house. Too many memories. I found a nice apartment in the neighboring town. Applied for a transfer at work. Life was slowly getting better. Of course, sadness would periodically roll over me. After all, I loved Sarah. But with each day, I realized more and more that I had done the right thing. Better a bitter truth than a sweet lie. One evening, the phone rang. The number was unfamiliar, but something made me answer. And I heard a voice that I never expected to hear again. John, it's Sarah. Please don't hang up. Let me say, I was silent, fighting the urge to really drop the call. Sarah sighed into the phone and continued, I know you hate me, and I deserved it. There is no forgiveness for what I did to you to Emily. I just wanted to say that I'm sorry. You were the best thing that ever happened in my life, and I ruined it all. Forgive me if you can. I could hear tears in her voice, but I didn't care anymore. This woman ceased to exist for me the moment I saw her in bed with another man. Goodbye, Sarah, I said curtly and hung up. She didn't call or write anymore. For me, it was already a past page. A new life was waiting ahead, and I was ready to step into it with my head held high. Looking back, I don't regret my action. Revenge is a dish best served cold, they say. But in my case, it brought me liberation and purification. I was able to let go of the past and start all over with a clean slate. Of course, the scars on my heart will remind me of themselves for a long time. Trust in people will have to be restored bit by bit. But I will cope, I know. Now I am stronger and wiser. I will not let myself be deceived. Six months after the wedding, I met her, the one and only, for whom it is worth living and breathing. We met by chance in the park, walking with our dogs. We started talking, began dating, and I felt it again. The thrill, the tenderness, the desire to care and protect. Her name is Lisa, and she is amazing. Kind, smart, with a great sense of humor. Next to her, I feel alive, truly happy. And most importantly, I can trust again. 
We are not rushing to the wedding yet, enjoying every moment together. I open my own small business. Lisa helps me with documents and advertising. We have many plans for the future, and I know, with her I can make them all come true. Recently I met Emily. She became a mom to an adorable baby girl and looks genuinely happy. She divorced David right after my wedding. Now she is dating a nice guy. We had a warm chat, even remembering the past with a smile. I don't know anything about Sarah, and I don't want to. There is no place for her in my life anymore. But there is a wonderful girl with whom I want to grow old, real friends, and a beloved business. You can't dream of more. You know I am grateful to fate for that bitter lesson. Without it, I would not have become who I am now. I would not have met my Lisa, would not have learned to cherish every moment. So, strange as it may seem, I am even glad that everything turned out this way. And you know what? Despite the pain and disappointments, I still believe in love. I believe that one day I will meet a person with whom I will share my whole life, both joys and sorrows. After all, without risk there is no reward, right? So here's my advice to you. Don't be afraid to take risks. Don't be afraid to open your heart, even if you've been betrayed. Because somewhere out there, around the corner, your happiness may be waiting for you. Just trust fate, and one day you will understand that it was all for a reason. On this, I think I will end my story. I hope that it will inspire someone, help them believe in themselves, and find the strength to move on. Remember, after the darkest night, dawn always comes. The main thing is to wait for it.